Hello and welcome to Frutch on Fighting with me, Carl Frutch. Whilst I've got you, please hit subscribe. Right, I'm going to do a big fight review, what I've just seen in Saudi Arabia. I'm just going to concentrate on the heavyweights. There were some good fights on the undercard. And I'm just going to give you my verdict on what I thought was happening with the heavyweight division. Don't forget, this episode is brought to you by Cobra Casino. So now let's start with Dubois and his performance tonight. Yeah, Daniel Dubois. You enjoyed that one, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, so Daniel Dubois fought Jarrell Miller. Jarrell Miller's been giving it a big jive talk all week. It was a big lump yeah. as well. Bloody hell, see the size of him. Anyway, Daniel Dubois fought really, really well. Boxing well. Boxing behind that jab. Putting combinations together. Miller came forward and stuck it on Dubois from round one. He was just walking forward. He didn't throw a punch in round one, actually, uh, Miller. But he was coming forward, arms up. Blocking shots, getting on, trying to get close to um, Dubois. And Dubois just stayed calm. He didn't panic. He was putting shots together. And I thought, if he works too hard, he might get tired. But actually, he was still throwing punches in round 10 where he got the finish. And I, was, I know I've just jumped to the end. But <laughs> between the start and the finish, I was really, really impressed with Daniel Dubois. Very composed. So he, he was always looking for that counter punch if anything was coming back. And there wasn't much coming at him until after about round four. But Dubois showed that he belongs in there with someone who's trying and coming to take. And don't forget, he lost to Joe Joyce. He lost to Usyk. He's in there now with someone who's coming to try and win. Jerome Miller's been giving it the big jive talk all week. And um, there was questions about Dubois' heart and how much he wanted the game. He took the knee with Usyk. Um, he got it with that jab. Obviously, Usyk's the best. The best of the best at the minute. And let's be honest, we'll find out when he fights Tyson Fury if he is actually the number one, numero uno. But for now, I've got him as, um, as the top guy in the division. But um, he also lost to Joe Joyce, which is no shame. But this fight with um, with Jarrell Miller, he really did turn up, and it was a it was a fight where he came of age. Very very impressive, good performance, solid combination punches, and towards the end, when you thought he could sit back behind the jab and just just coast to a point of victory, because it was it was ahead on all the scorecards. And um, what did he do? He still kept coming forward, still went for it, still believed in himself, and he went for the finish. So he showed there. That he means business and he showed that he belongs in the mix now with the top heavyweights. I mean, I'm not going to say jump in there with Usyk again or straight away with Tyson Fury. I'll tell you what, the fight with Anthony Joshua might be an interesting one, but he's still got time to build, build Dubois as. So I'd just say for now, that was a solid performance from Dubois. Very impressed and um, yeah, well done to him. Now let's move on to Parker Wilder. Yeah, listen, Joseph Parker against Wilder. What a performance that was. I mean, there's two things here. I don't want to. I don't want to take anything away from Joseph Parker's performance because it was a great performance. He's obviously been training well. He's, he's, he's busy. He's got Andy Lee in his corner. He gets a lot of praise for training him. He's been training with Fury as well. And he's been doing a lot of sparring. And Wilder has had what was it two years out of the ring, and he's had one round where he knocked out Halinius in the first round. So I just think, first of all, I'd say Joseph Parker fought really, really well. He fought a great fight. It was. He was busy. He was, he was on the outside of um, Deontay Wilder, keeping him, keeping him on his back foot, keeping Wilder on his back foot, taking that momentum away from him. So Wilder wasn't coming forward. Wilder was sitting back looking for the one pot shot counter punch and it was never going to come. He wasn't busy enough. He, he, he barely threw any punches, Deontay Wilder. It was like, what's he waiting for? Is he waiting for a big explosion? Is he going to really go for it? Now, there's two things here. It was either Parker was that good and didn't give him the time to do it or Deontay Wilder was really, really poor. He's been out of the ring for two years and... It's a long time to be out of the ring. That inactivity. And he's 38 years old as well. So maybe he's getting old. Maybe he's tiring. Bit of ring rust. Bit of ring rust, exactly. But I just want to say Parker did really, really well and give him all the credit in the world. He, he, he deserved the win. It was, a, it was really good. It was like a conclusive. What did I have it scored? One, 118, yeah. 111? Yes. One of the scorecards was 120, 108. I mean, that's every round. I think that was a bit harsh on Wilder. I thought he nicked a couple of rounds in there. Um, but... Joseph Parker did great. I, th I thought Deontay Wilder was fucking awful. Sorry sorry to swear this time of night. It's, it's getting late. I'm a bit tired. But it was terrible. It was a terrible performance. Where does Deontay Wilder go from here now? I mean, he's talking about he's done an ayahuasca ceremony. I, I, I've got nothing against ayahuasca. If you look it up, have a look. If you don't know what ayahuasca is, it's, um, it's, a, it's a spiritual awakening. It, 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 it makes your liver release dimethyltryptidine, I think it is. And that's the chemical that your liver produces when you're dying. So... It's kind of a spiritual thing. It sort of gives you a spiritual awakening. Now, that can have so many health benefits and so many positive things mentally for you. But I just think, whilst you're boxing, I don't know if that's something you want to be dipping your toe into. And um, obviously, if you go off that performance from Dante Wilder, 
maybe if you're boxing, don't try ayahuasca because that was one of the worst performances I've seen from Deontay Wilder in a long time. But that might be because Joseph Parker was that good. What do you think of it, Ray? For me, he just looked like a completely different person. I don't know. He was quite happy at the end. He just I think he just was looking forward to Christmas and wanted to get back to his family, yeah, really. Yeah, no urgency. He was quite, like, smiling That's after That's what I'm it. saying about the I ayahuasca, mean, peace was, with life. Yeah, but what was the hand in the air? Did he really think he'd won, or I was he just being deluded? Know. I don't know. That was a bit of delusion. There's no way he should have held his hand up at the end because he, he definitely didn't win. And I just think that maybe he's earned that much money... Maybe the, I mean, people are saying he's overrated. He's not really done anything. Who's he for? Who's he beat? He's had some good knockouts. Listen, this is a guy that can punch really hard. We see what he did with with um, Tyson Fury. Three fights with Tyson Fury. I feel that them fights have taken a lot out of Deontay Wilder. And and he got knocked down a few times. He got badly hurt. He got stopped against, against Fury. And them beatings, you can't just, they can't go unnoticed. They take the stamina bar down in a human being. Every single fight ages you. You leave a piece of you in that ring when you have a bad fight. And uh, I think Deontay Wilder, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I think he's about finished. I think he's about done. I don't think his mind's in the right space. I think that performance was, was just not the, the Deontay Wilder that I expect. But this is, a, this is now an old guy who's been beaten a few times now, twice off Fury, now he's lost to Parker. And Parker, we know his levels. We know he lost to White. He's lost to AJ. You know, this... This is a guy that's that's not really performing at world level. I'm not saying he can't. He might be back. And um, Parker, Parker is back. Done, done really, really well. But I think Deontay Wilder's finished. So I don't want to take the shine off, off Parker by playing down um, Deontay Wilder because that was a great performance. They certainly don't want to piss on his parade. Great performance by Joseph Parker. Well done. The future's looking bright. But I think Deontay Wilder needs to just, just finish. So now let's talk about AJ Volin. What did you make of that fight? Anthony Joshua, Otto Volin. I thought Volin might be in the fight a little bit. I thought he might come and make it awkward. And I thought AJ being a bit negative and a bit tentative, it could be a close fight. It could even go wrong for Anthony Joshua. But guess what? I'm not going to say AJ's back. But I'm going to say, AJ's back. Is he back? He just <laughs> might be back. Listen, that performance there from AJ, because from round one, it was behind his jab. It was, it was, it meant business. He was looking in the eyes of Valin. It was, it was setting up that kind of right hand. I like it. If for a little half hearted jab, a little slip to the right, boom, right hand. He was looking for the counter and he found it a couple of times. But then when shots came back at him, he was looking at going straight back with another attack. So it was positive from Anthony Joshua. It was quite solid. All right, he's in against a guy who looked really, I mean, Valin didn't look good, did he? What well, did he have? A bit of a belly on him. He got no pecs, no biceps. I expected more. From the Nordic warrior. I don't know if they call him the Nordic warrior. He's from Sweden, isn't it? I just thought he looked like a bag of shit. Let's be honest. He didn't look much. But AJ, and but he went 12 rounds with Tyson Fury. So I'm not going to write him off. It looked like a sparring session. That's what it looked like. But AJ looked positive. He looked solid. He looked sharp. He looked happy as well. Yeah. And he got the job done. So full props to Anthony Joshua. But um, he's supposed to be fighting Deontay Wilder. So Do you think that fight's going to go ahead now? Well, okay, no. What happened with Joseph Parker? He's totally fucking rained on that parade, hasn't he? So, do, do we want to see Anthony Joshua now fighting Deontay Wilder on the back of that performance against Parker? No, we don't. Well, I don't, anyway. You might you might let me know in the comments below what you think. But um, I don't want to see that fight. I don't particularly want to see Anthony Joshua against Joseph Parker either because because AJ's already beat Parker. He's already, he's already done him. So, it's like, now where do we go from here? Maybe we've got AJ against, against Zhang. That's a good fight. AJ against Hergovic. That might be the way he's going. But AJ is kind of, I'm, I'm holding back when I say it, because AJ can't, he's not fully back, but he just might be, because that was a solid performance. It's what we wanted to see from Anthony Joshua. Positivity on his front foot, looking for the counter and looking for the finish. Obviously, Valin pulled out after round five, I think it was, but AJ dominated and um, yeah, he got the job done. So fair play to him. All the props to Anthony Joshua. It did look like a sparring session. Same, same, as, same as Parker and Deontay Wilder look like a bit of a sparring session because Wilder never got going. I think the man of the match or the, the guy that stole the show was Daniel Dubois yeah. against, um, against Jarrell Miller. Yeah. That was, for me, that, that was a great fight. I mean, obviously, Bivol was on, on the undercard as well. Bivol did, did really, really well. Who did, who did Bivol fight? Oh, um, Arthur. Lyndon Arthur. Lyndon Arthur. See, I test the wife there. <laughs> Put her on the spot. In She's Arthur. Not even so, yeah. <laughs> Um, that was a great, great performance. I mean, Arthur was in the fight. He did well, tried his best. But Bivol, 
bit of a different class, just just different grade, a proper top level fighter. And you couldn't get Lyndon Arthur out there though. He stayed with it, stuck with it, lost on points. But I think Arthur will be back. But yeah, Anthony Joshua, I think, is close to being back. But overall, there's not really much I can say except for great night of boxing, and we'll wait to see what happens. Tyson Fury against um, Usyk. I think that's the next big one. That's February, so that's one to look forward to. But how the landscape of the heavyweight division changes in one night of boxing. Thanks for tuning in. So that's it for a quick roundup of Frotch on Fighting with me, Carl Frotch, and my lovely wife, Rachel. Are you coming in shot or not? Uh, no, no. no, <laughs> not no the it's a bit late. I've got my jammers on. Yeah, they won't, they won't be on for very long. <laughs> I'm joking. Right, it is very late, actually. But anyway, this has been another episode of Frotch on Fighting. Hope you enjoyed, and I shall see you after Christmas. So everybody, please, if you can, have a wonderful Christmas. It's the festive season. Chill out if that's all you're doing. Go out and party if you're into that. But um, spend time with family, friends and loved ones. And just enjoy yourself because this is a festive period where people come together. Peace, harmony, love. And um, yeah, just, just have a wonderful Christmas. Until next time. And I just want to say thanks for tuning in, everyone. We appreciate it. Yeah, we absolutely do. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe. Happy New Year. <laughs>